to think about the last time that you voted. What motivated you? How did you choose the candidates that you voted for? Maybe it was their views on healthcare, or taxes, or national security. Or maybe this was a local election and it was all about potholes. <laughs> but did you think about those candidate stances on data privacy, on artificial intelligence, on broadband access, you know, tech policy? If you're like the average American, you probably didn't, and I don't blame you. It's not like there are many politicians making deep emotional appeals to us to vote for them because of their views on cybersecurity. Opinion polling companies don't even bother to ask us to rank tech policy among the issues that we prioritize when we vote. It's seen as this really niche subset of issues that's only relevant to a small number of people. You know, nerds. <laughs> I have worked in digital media for the past 15 years, many of those years as a technology journalist. I am one of those nerds. I once went to an internet freedom rally outside my senator's office, dressed up as a cockroach, holding a sign encouraging Congress to exterminate a particularly bad bill. I'm really clever, I know. <laughs> but I have wondered for a long time what it would take for tech policy to become an issue that compels voters. After all, innovation in tech affects every single one of us pretty much every moment of our lives. Plus, it's not that we don't care about how tech affects our lives. A study released in conjunction with the RSA Security Conference in 2019 found that 96% of Americans across generations care about their digital privacy. 95% of them express mistrust for social networking companies. Market research firm Capgemini found that over half of Americans are worried that their voice assistant devices, so like Alexa, are listening to them without their knowledge. And if you look at automation, Pew Research found in 2019 that 82% of Americans believe that by 2050, robots will do the majority of the work that humans do today, and 76% of them are concerned that it will contribute to income inequality. Well, the tide is turning, and the time is now for citizens to get involved in tech policy. Let's look at some headlines. States like California are passing sweeping data privacy bills that will affect how we interact with products and services we use every day. Presidential candidates are debating whether or not automation is posing a threat to American jobs and whether big tech companies are too powerful and need to be broken up. Cities and states are regulating companies like Uber and Airbnb but often they're driven not so much by consumer and labor concerns, but by lobbyists. You probably didn't think about tech policy in the last election you voted in, but you should think about it in this one, because otherwise, laws are going to be written for us without our input. I'm not here to tell you what views to take on tech policy issues, but I do want to give you a framework and an approach for learning about it yourself for figuring out what views you want to take and for engaging your elected officials. First, tech policy is relevant on both a very intimate, very personal scale and a global one. I am willing to bet that just about everyone in this room at this moment is in possession of a device that was manufactured by a large technology company and that contains software manufactured by other large technology companies. I am also willing to bet you are thinking of taking out that device and looking at it if I start to bore you. <laughs> we rely on those devices for a lot. Everything from taking pictures of our dogs, to checking the weather, to monitoring our health. And in return, the companies that make those devices and the software on them know a heck of a lot about us. The same lines of code that we use to share those dog pictures with our friends can also be used to deploy a misinformation campaign designed to swing the results of an election halfway around the world. We use technologies for some of our most mundane and boring tasks. Increasingly, those same technologies are now found in our cars, in our televisions, even our thermostats. 
Those technologies are also used by governments and militaries around the world. In short, no tech policy issue is too big or too small. And so when you're learning about it, learn about the whole spectrum. Think not just about how it might affect you when you vote in a federal election, but also in state elections, local elections, all the way down to that town council that can't stop talking about potholes. Because you never know, one of these days, they might be talking about using taxpayer money to get a robot to repair those potholes. My second point is that tech policy does not fall along an easy left-right partisan divide, and you're going to have to think outside that box when you start to learn about it and engage with politicians on it. Taking a look at Facebook, a company that has absolutely been in the political crosshairs recently, Facebook is currently getting criticized by some Republican senators who say it censors conservative voices, and some Democratic senators who say that its negligence permitted conservative propaganda to throw the 2016 presidential election to Donald Trump. In addition to the fact that I'm pretty sure those two things can't simultaneously be completely true, things actually go quite a bit deeper. The more you learn, the more you'll discover that there's a lot of intra-party dissent on tech policy. Neither major party has a cohesive strategy for dealing with Facebook or with tech policy in general. Now, this is in part because, yes, we do have some politicians, including on a national level, who are completely illiterate when it comes to technology. But it's also because tech policy is complicated. It's nuanced. You can't boil it down to a cable news chyron or a hashtag or cheap political talking points. It just doesn't work that way. So as you read about it, you may find some surprises. There may be politicians whom you voted for multiple times and with whom you think you agree on everything, then you learn about their stances on tech policy and you think they're downright crazy. And there may be other politicians whom you never would have thought of voting for before, and maybe you still won't, but you realize that you're very aligned with them when it comes to tech. My third point is that we need to push our elected officials to legislate for the future, not the past. You don't hear a whole lot of politicians talking about how the tech-related issues that they regulate, how those issues will affect people in 5, 10, 20 years. And they tend to legislate to clean up recent messes rather than to pre prepare for the future. My favorite example of this is the fact that companies like Netflix in the digital video space still have their product development affected by a law that was passed in the 80s to deal specifically with VHS tape rentals. It's called the Video Privacy Protection Act of 1988. You can look it up and learn all about it. But in short, what happened was that in the midst of a very heated hearing for a Supreme Court justice nominee, that justice's rental history from his local video store was leaked and published in a newspaper. Congress seized on the opportunity to make it illegal to share someone else's video rental history without their consent. So we have the Video Privacy Protection Act. <laughs> Meanwhile, our most comprehensive federal privacy law dates back to 1974. It's a big ask to want your elected officials to be able to tell you wh what the laws they pass will mean a generation from now, but it is a demand that we need to make because innovation moves fast. So I want to challenge everyone in this room. Call your congressional representatives. Go on your governor's website. Learn about digital rights organizations like the Electronic Freedom Foundation or the Center for Democracy and Technology. Find out what your elected officials are actually doing. Consider what they could be doing. Consider how you could be involved. You may be surprised at what you learn, and never doubt the power of informed citizens seizing the opportunity to affect real change. Thank you.